We now have this problem of the desired capabilities being deprecated and our course has not updated that. I've got many questions from students like you asking why is this course not being updated to the desired capabilities being addressed. Well, in order to fix the desired capabilities issue, it's very, very simple, guys. All we have to do is use just the driver options. So basically now the Selenium team has migrated the desired capability to start using the driver options. So basically whatever Chrome driver or Firefox driver or the Edge driver that you install, it also comes with a driver options class. So the driver options class is something which is very, very specific to manage all the browser drivers specifically based on the browsers. So what I'm going to do is this time, I'm going to change the code a little bit because this whole project is a completely different project. I can easily make all the breaking changes without any problem with my own wish. And you can see that I get what is called as a driver options. And it says that it's a base class for managing the options specific to browser drivers. So I'm just going to call this guy. I'm going to call this as driver options. So if I go to the driver options, you can see that it has what is called as an accept insecure certificate, platform, browser versions, browser name, page load strategies and stuff. Pretty much exactly what you really require for all the browser to actually support. So how to write the code now? This is very important as well. So I'm going to use the most quickly and uh, dirty way of doing that. I'm just going to remove the desired capability from here all in one shot. And then instead of browser type, I'm just going to change this as a driver option. Well, as that did, you need to also change the case in here. So instead of this browse type dot Internet Explorer, we are going to call the Internet Explorer driver options of the Internet Explorer driver options. So basically, just going to and then you can set the uh, the driver options over here. So I'm just going to remove this guy as the driver options with the Internet Explorer options. So I'm not even using the underscore parallel config dot driver anymore because that's basically going to be uh, an option in here, right? So I can do that. And then I'm also going to change the Firefox options uh, from the driver. So Firefox option of the Firefox options. And instead of setting the whole capability something like this, I'm actually going to be using the Firefox option as well. So I'm just going to remove these guys as this line of code. So you can see this is exactly the same uh, code, just that I'm going to be using the Firefox option over here. And also then the Chrome options, right? So I need to change this to Chrome options of Chrome options. I'm going to replace that as well. And you can see that I'm adding an additional capability of enable profiling as true, which means it's going to basically enable the profiling options for me, which is fine. It's going to be doing that for me as well. And as that said, instead of the cap in here, the cap that you are seeing, I'm going to be using the driver options and you can just leave this as it is. Or if you can also change this to two capabilities if you want to tell it more explicitly that you are going to use these capabilities for your code. Well, if you make this change, the next question comes is what happens to my browser type because I'm not going to be using this efficiently anymore. You can actually wrap this code to make it even more happening. Something like you can still pass the browser type to choose what browser you'll be using, but the code has to be modified a little bit as well. Instead of using the settings or browser type something like this directly, I'm going to be creating what is called as a get browser options uh, method, something like uh, this. So public of the driver option of the get browser option of the browser type that we have used all these days. And then I'm going to write a switch statement here where I'm going to say the browser type, you can see it brings me up the whole case statement. Well, here I'm going to return the new Internet Explorer option because all we really require is the options, right? So I'm just going to do that. And similarly, I'm going to pass for the Firefox and the Chrome as well. 
something like this that's it so this get browser option method is what is going to basically play a key role for getting our browser type itself so instead of directly passing the browser type i'm just going to call the get browser options uh, uh this is for options this is option all right cool so now our code is more legitimate uh, to use this particular uh, code without any desired capabilities and stuff right so let me save this code and now if i try to run this whole code something like this you can see that our server or the selenium server is actually up and running you can see it enabled the profiling that's what we did set and you can see that it's opening the chrome browser for us and running the test in dotnet core 3.1 which is pretty cool and you can see it again opens the chrome browser with this chrome options that we have set And this Chrome option with enabled profiling and stuff is really, really going to be helpful while we are actually going to be making use of .NET Core uh, 3.1 with Selenium 4 support. So we'll be talking about that in our course in upcoming days while the Selenium 4 full version is completely released. By the time, it's also going to be supporting the .NET Core 3.1, I guess. So we should be having uh, seeing those uh, cores as well upgraded in this particular uh, section or maybe the next section so you can see that now it is fully executed and now if i directly go to the cross-platform project or the solution for the first time you can see that i'm going to open the solution uh, and if i go to the bin folder the debug folder you can see that it is now in a different structure altogether there you go guys you can see the whole thing is actually coming here for us like this pretty cool right well we have executed this code and we are now looking for the extent reporting like where is this actually sitting so if you see our code we actually have this uh, extent report at html file in this particular location so if i just go to the browser and if i search for the extent report uh -oh, maybe that's not the location or something uh, let's search for uh, that particular location so if I go to uh, C colon this particular folder there you go we actually see this HTML file and now if I open this yes we can see this particular uh, extend report is also working without any problem so basically you can see our code is now actually working without any problem and we could see the extend report is also working without any problem with all those executions happening right so this way we can now conclude that our whole code is actually working without any problem with the dotnet core 3.1 framework with a complete migration done so that's it guys this is how we can actually migrate our existing code to dotnet core 3.1 with even all the greatest and the latest updates if there are any new updates coming in the dotnet uh, world and also in the selenium 4 world and we are going to show some of the great features in that i am going to add all those things in this particular course as well and once again thank you very much for purchasing this course and have a great day